back for another day and another daily devotion. And today we're going to be starting a new book in the New Testament. We're in the book of 1 Thessalonians. And 1 Thessalonians is a book that was written by Paul to a brand new church. These, these are baby Christians, but they are growing in maturity. The book of Thessalonians is really an encouraging book because Paul is praising them for the way that they've come to know Christ and they're walking with him and they've become a model congregation and the other congregations in the area are taking notice and they're praising God. And so turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and we're going to uh, just walk our way through this. And we could look down at verse 1. Paul says, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians and God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. And so you have Paul's kind of normal greeting to them, but Paul identifies himself and Timothy and Silvanus. And you may wonder, well, who's Silvanus? Well, this is Silas, and Paul likes to refer to Silas as Silvanus. So it's Paul and Silas and Timothy. They're ministering there. Uh, they're in Thessalonica. They're bringing the gospel. And look at how Paul gives thanks for their response to the gospel. Verse 2, he says, We give thanks to God always for you, making mention of you in our prayers, constantly bearing in mind your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of of our God and Father. And so when Paul thinks about them, he praises God and he remembers three things about them. Look at what he says. He talks about their work of faith, their labor of love, and the steadfastness of hope. He mentions faith, hope, and love. It kind of sounds like Another area where Paul says, now abide these three, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And so when Paul thinks about the Thessalonians, what does he see? He sees their, their faith. He sees their love. And he sees that their hope is in the Lord and that they're relying on the Lord. That's going to come in later on in the chapter here. And Paul recounts how they responded to the gospel. If you look down in verse 4, he says, Knowing, brethren, beloved by God... His choice for you, for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with full conviction. And so Paul says, you know, we brought the gospel to you and the Holy Spirit was at work in power. He was bringing about full conviction in you. The people were hearing the truth, they were believing, and they were convinced of it. He goes on and he, he talks about how the Holy Spirit not only brought about conviction in them, but he also produced in them joy. If you look down in verse 6, he says, You became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation and with joy in the Holy Spirit. And so these people, they had come to know the Lord. They believed in the gospel, that they uh, were convicted and they held to the truth of the gospel, but they also had joy in the midst of much tribulation. Now, in order to really understand Paul's writing to the Thessalonians, we have to understand the situation. And we see the situation laid out for us in Acts 17. So as Paul is ministering and he's moving on on his missionary journey, you have the Philippian jailer uh, being converted and he is saved. And then Paul and Silas and uh, Timothy, they move on into uh, Thessalonica. And we see that in Acts 17. Let me just read it for you and so you understand just the situation of the church. Acts 17 1 says, Now when they had traveled through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica. And there was a synagogue of the Jews. And according to Paul's custom, he went to them, and for three Sabbaths, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and giving evidence that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead. And he was saying, This Jesus whom I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. So Paul, he goes to Thessalonica. There's a synagogue there, and he ministers to the Jews as was his custom. He would go to the Jews first and then the Gentiles. And he spent three Sabbaths with them. He was reasoning. He was explaining the Old Testament to them, that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Jesus is the promised Savior. He is the Messiah that God had provided. 
It says in verse 4, some of them were persuaded and they joined Paul and Silas along with a large number of the God-fearing Greeks and number of the leading women. So some of the Jews believed and they came to understand Jesus is the Messiah and Paul is telling the truth. He's backing it up from the New Testament or from the Old Testament. But most of the converts were Gentiles and even some of the, the leading women of the city. Verse 5 tells us that the Jews became jealous and taking along some wicked men from the marketplace, they formed a mob and they attacked the house of Jason and they were seeking to bring them out to the people. So they formed this mob and they persecuted these brand new Christians. They wanted to chase Paul and Silas out of the city. Persecution got so bad that verse 10 tells us that the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And when they arrived there, they went into the synagogue of the Jews and they preached again. But persecution ramped up so quickly and it was so intense that these brand new Christians in Thessalonica, they sent Paul and Silas away. They, they said, you guys have to get out of here. It's too dangerous for you. And so Paul and Silas, they went on to really spare the, these new Thessalonian Christians from greater persecution. But the encouraging thing is that even though Paul and Silas weren't there, they weren't there to shepherd them and to care for them, they were there long enough to establish them in the truth of God's word. And that's what Paul rejoices. So when we go back to, Thessalo, uh, to 1 Thessalonians, we see that Paul says, you guys receive the gospel, that you guys have faith and hope and love. We see that the Holy Spirit brought conviction that these Thessalonian believers, they held to the truth, and they trusted in Christ, and they had a firm conviction even though they were being persecuted. And so Paul says, because of that, you, you guys became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation and with joy in the Holy Spirit. So they came to trust Christ they, they firmly believed the gospel. They were imitating Christ and the apostles. They were walking with the Lord. And even though they were suffering tribulation, hardship, what did they have? They had joy in the Lord. So you can understand why Paul is rejoicing. He's praising God for them and he's encouraging them. He says, you guys responded to the gospel in such a great way, you've become a model and an example for the other congregations in the area. Look down at verse 8, or actually verse 7. He says, you became examples to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia, and that the word of God has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but also in every place your faith towards God has gone forth so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves report about us what kind of a reception we had with you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Paul's just recounting their response and how their response to the gospel has spread and that you have other Christians in other places saying, man, the Thessalonians, they've really come to trust in, in Christ. They are following him even in the midst of hardship and persecution. But one of the greatest ways that they came to trust the Lord and to follow him is that they turned to God and they turned away from idols and that they were committed to the Lord. So Paul praises them for their response to the gospel. So you see their faith, you see their hope, you see their love, you see that they had conviction and joy, you see that they became imitators of the Lord and of Paul and his missionary partners and how they turned away from idols and they turned to God. And he wraps up in verse 10, he says, and to wait for God's son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. You know, the Thessalonians, they believed the gospel. They were following the Lord, and they were waiting on him, and they were looking forward to Christ, to his return, and they had their hope in him.
So as we begin the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, what we see is just a, a true and a sincere response in faith. What does it look like to believe the gospel? What does it look like to follow the Lord? What does it look like to grow in the midst of opposition, hardship, persecution? Well, we see it in the Thessalonians. And so that's what we're going to see as we as we go through this book, that we see their growth in the Lord. We see the way that they handle situations and hardship, and Paul praises them for that. So it's going to be a great study. Looking forward to it. Make sure, take some time, uh, read in uh, 1 Thessalonians, but also read in Acts 17. Get the big picture. Well, looking forward to next time, and we'll see you then. God bless. Mm-hmm.